I'd like to talk to you today about economic events that are upcoming. We're going to start with this week, April 28th. A lot of the focus now will shift on to the United States. We have the Federal Reserve Open Market Committee meeting this week. They're expected to keep interest rates unchanged at close to zero, but they will continue to cut back on the amount of assets they will buy, their asset purchase program, by a further 10 billion. This will bring our asset purchases down to about 45 billion US dollars a month. Now, they started cutting back the so-called tapering of asset purchases last December when they were buying 85 billion a month. So we reckon by the end of October they will complete this program and will no longer be intervening to buy US Treasury uh, bonds or mortgage-backed securities to try and keep interest rates low. That doesn't necessarily mean that we'll start to see a raise in U uh, a hike in US interest rates anytime soon. In fact, new uh, Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen has indicated there could be a quite a considerable period before they start raising interest rates. And at the moment, we think they'll start raising interest rates about the middle of 2015. So that means that interest rates essentially will remain very low in the United States. And that's anchoring an awful lot of economic activity around the world. And the idea here is to generate more economic activity in the US housing sector. They won't change their so-called forward guidance. They're trying to get the unemployment rate lower and inflation higher. And that's why they need extraordinary economic uh, policy or a very accommodative policy to generate uh, that sort of uh, stronger growth going forward. On the same day, we'll get an update on US economic growth in the Q1. Remember, this was very heavily impacted by this, the uh, polar vortex, but we're still expecting economic growth in the US to post about a 1% gain. The big event in the US next week after the Federal Open Markets Committee will be the payrolls update. That is the labor market report in the US. We're expecting another 200,000 or so jobs to be created and for the unemployment rate to tick down to 6.6. .6. Now, we think the unemployment rate will need to get closer to 5% to make the Federal Reserve feel a bit more comfortable about raising short-term interest rates. So this period of extraordinary policy accommodation will continue. And if you think that interest rates here in Australia and New Zealand where rates have been raised uh, last week, that, that, that helps to explain why our currencies have remained relatively strong. The other big event uh, over the course of this week will be an update on the manufacturing pulse in China. That's their so-called PMI, Purchasing Managers Index report, that's due on Thursday. For Australia, we're going to have a, a quiet week before a very, very busy week next week. Now, last week we got a, a CPI update, an inflation report, that showed inflation pulse in Australia is still relatively uh, moderate, and that means the RBA's policy uh, they've got a lot of time to, to assess the outlook for policy and keep interest rates low. ANZ thinks that RBA rates will be kept on hold for the whole of this year before rising again, uh, again in 2015. So the week after this is very, very busy. We get an update on ANZ job ads. We get some retail sales update. There's a Reserve Bank board meeting. There'll be no change in rates then. And there'll be a statement on monetary policy where the RBA update their forecast for inflation and growth. The big event then, similar to the US, will be the labor market report. And then we get the budget, the first of the Abbott government, the following week, so that'll be pretty important. So all of this means, I think, that global markets uh, will be uh, relatively low, uh, they'll have relatively low volatility. It's a relatively good environment for stock markets to perform, but this the period of low volatility is set to continue in line with this low, stable policy outlook in the United States. The only risk on the horizon is if you see a rise in so-called geopolitical tensions, and most of that focus is on what's happening in the Ukraine and Russia. Now, if anything flares up there in terms of military action, you'd expect that to hit market sentiment. Stock markets might be a little bit weaker and more demand for safe haven bonds. But at the moment, that just appears to be a little bit of a risk. Thank you very much.